you are to demonstrate the setup of a multiple station decon corridor. Keep in mind, in an actual incident, the number of stations required is determined by the type of chemical and its persistence. A hazmat technician, if available, will determine the required level of response. For our purposes, you will set up a shuffle pit and two wash and rinse stations. First, select a site upwind and uphill of the incident, where drainage and vapors will move back towards the incident or hot zone. Lay out large tarps to contain overspray and runoff. Overlap the first tarp to ensure contaminants remain on the wet side of the contamination reduction corridor. Straighten and align the tarps with one another. Working as a team, roll tarps together to create a berm. Fold an approximately two to three foot corner, matching your partner. These are the first folds of the corner seals to be finished later. Working as a team, roll all sides, one side at a time, folding corners to create a strong seal against leakage as you go. Maintain a reasonable distance between yourself and your partner. If you're too close, you may become congested. If you're too far apart, your rolls will lose strength and uniformity. Add strength at each corner by rolling the tarp at a 45 degree angle and folding remaining material over and under, locking corner in place. Place cones against the tarp at each corner to hold them in place. Parallel to your team member, continue placing evenly spaced cones against tarp sides for support and to identify both the access corridor and emergency decon corridor. Clearly mark both exit and entry points with cones, entering at the hot zone end and exiting at the cold zone end. At the entrance, set up an outer boot drop, an outer glove drop, a tool drop, and a shuffle pit in the hot zone. To create the shuffle pit, set up a large tub and two long-handled brushes, 
which are used to remove the gross contamination. Fill the tub with 2 inches of water. Wash and rinse pools should be in line with the shuffle pit, close enough that the entrant can step from one onto the absorbent pad and directly into the next. Place grating in the pool to keep the entrant out of the product as he or she is washed. Place PVC canes or walkers nearby to assist the entrant with transitioning. Place absorbent pads before and after each pool. Lay out a scrub bucket and a pump sprayer for the wash and rinse stations. Wash stations should consist of something to hold water, such as a tub or pool, access to water, a cleaning solution, and some type of scrubber. Sawhorses can be located on the dirty side and are used for emergency, non-ambulatory decontamination. Place a backboard on top of the sawhorses. Create two doffing stations for PPE with a bench seat or chair and a plastic bag the responder can step into to doff PPE. Extra bags can be placed on the clean side to replace used PPE bags. PPE and bags will remain on the dirty side for later disposal. Place absorbent pads along the direction of travel for the cleaned entrant. Place a table for SCBA doffing station. Place bins for mask and helmet drop underneath table. This keeps a clean station for attendants assisting in the decon line. Continue the path of absorbent pads on the clean side of the decon line for entrance to walk along. These are easily replaced between entrance. Place a general waste bin and writ bag at the end of the decon line. Place an emergency decon hose line at the emergency decon exit point. Place wind indicator flags at the entrance of the decon line to monitor wind direction, ensuring operations remain upwind of the hot zone. Once complete, Walk through your decon line with the map in hand to ensure all your components are in place.